everything be it unto me
Heavenly Father, we bow down before your holy presence this evening in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank you, Father, for this opportunity that you have given unto us to gather in this function in your presence, O oh Lord. I want to thank you, Father, for gathering us by the shout in these last days, the message of the hour. Lord, you have called us from different walks. You have called us, O oh God, from this world unto this marvelous light. We are so thankful, dear God, that we are not walking in confusion. I want to thank you, dear Lord, that we are not walking in darkness because your word has given a promise that in the evening time it shall be light. Oh God, here we are in the light that you have promised, oh God, the light of the message of the hour. We are so thankful, mighty God, that we are counted amongst those that you have elected and chosen even way back before the foundation of the world. Oh dear God, we want to thank you for the mysteries that you have made known in this designated season, oh God. Heavenly Father, you taught us that there are things that can never be known until a specific time when the Spirit reveals them. And oh God, we are so thankful because in this age in which we are living, oh dear God, all of your mysteries are finished. That which you have hindered Daniel to see, that which you have hindered John to write, Lord, you have revealed it unto us. We are so thankful, Father, to be awarded an opportunity to live in this age, this last age, oh God. Oh dear Father, I pray today as we are here in your divine presence, may your Holy Ghost come down and take preeminence of this service. Lord, we don't want to go back the same way that we have come in, oh Lord. May there be something, oh God, special that can be done in our lives. Oh dear God, when we look under the signs of the time, they are pointing us at your coming. Lord, we want to be ready. Father, we want our lives to be refined by the word. We pray, Father, that may you come and speak with us today like you have never spoken before. If there is anything un unpleasant before thee in our lives, I pray that may you separate us from it, O oh Lord, because we don't want to be found wanting on that day when you shall appear. We want our lives, O oh God, to be patterning after the word that you have given unto us. O oh, dear Lord, this message has come to establish that sp true spiritual relationship between us and you, Lord. Even today, as your word is going to go forth, I pray that may that true spiritual relationship between us and you be established, O oh God. Father, I pray that may you lead us by the way that we may know you better today. Oh, my heavenly Father, I pray that may you anoint every segment of the service. I pray that may you give grace unto every believer who is going to be part of this service, oh God. Heavenly Father, that we may all grab the portion that you have loaded for each and every one of us. Because we know that when you come for the service, you don't come empty-handed. You come with blessings, oh God, for your sons and your daughters. Lord, today, we don't want to miss you. Oh dear God, we don't want to miss the blessings that you have for us. Oh mighty King, I pray, putting every destructive spirit under our feet, anything that can be of a disturbance in this service. Oh dear Lord, we put it under our feet in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh mighty Father, I pray, oh Lord, committing this segment of the singing of the songs of Zion, may we sing in one accord, may we sing in one spirit. Unite us, oh Lord, to worship you. The mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we commend everything unto the incapable hands. Amen.
Hallelujah. I greet everyone in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to believe how happy to be back in the house of the Lord. We have come under an expectation, believing that even today God has something special for us. Hallelujah. We want to take the song. We can all rise on our feet. Let's talk about Jesus. F. Let's talk about Jesus, the King of Kings. Is he? Oh, Jesus, the King of Kings, King of Kings. The Lord, Lord of Lords, Lord throughout eternity. It's a 
challenge to accept. It's a faith to rise into. It's a way I can show the way that Jesus Christ is true. It's a life to live a testimony blameless. I'm gonna prove. I'm gonna prove. Let's all sing. I'm one in a million. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show the power of the blood. I'm gonna prove. I'm not like those from certain cities. God to show that I'm a person that is where is in where true representatives representatives of Christ in the field that you've been placed the joy of your life with him always the glowing on your True witness, a true witness of Christ in this day. You got to prove. You got to prove. You got to prove. You are one in a million. You got to show. The ones we are the, the ones, ones that's going to stand and keep a testimony in the midst of this in the midst of the this living world we keep looking to the unseen to really know that we will overcome and receive his promise from me to sit on his throne. We've got to prove. We've got to prove. We've got to prove. We are one in a million. we got to show. faith to rise into. Hallelujah. Let's take the song, The Day of Redemption is Near. F sharp. The day of redemption is near. Men's hearts are failing for faith. Let's 
song and after that we have special songs we want to take the song further along further along d tempted and try we Why is your bitter all the day long? Why they are not living apart? Never molested, no in their own feather alone.
Hallelujah. We can give a mighty hand to the Lord. I feel the pull inside. Hallelujah. Oh, 
about the persecution. Hallelujah. We need him more than ever. Praise the Lord. We want to take this song, new consecration. New consecration. Is that it for us?
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can give a mighty hand of praise unto the Lord. We can all rise on our feet. We want to take the song, Let Thy Will Be Done. Let Thy Will Be Done. We'll be inviting our pastor. Let's be the name of the Lord. 
this wonderful atmosphere. Just want to open our hearts unto the Lord. Showing our dedication. Our willingness to trust in the Lord. For such a time as this. May the Lord give us grace that we can stand where he wants us to stand and be identified with this purpose and vision for the hour. Maybe tonight you are here heavily laden. You need grace. Praise be to God. You want the Lord to undertake for you do not hesitate to raise your hand to the Lord we believe he's right here to make all things new for he has promised in his word for such a time as this there will be a performance of the supernatural as his bride will stand as the final voice of this final age as a super race and we are the people shall we pray our gracious heavenly father we bow our hearts in adoration this blessed end time evening with gratitude we approach your throne of grace knowing that your grace is sufficient and your word is more than able to change our circumstances. We are coming, Lord, with an assurance of faith that we are living in our predestined, ordained, and decreed season. And we are the very people that have been called to fulfill prophecy and manifest the living word of God as the word predestined mixed with the word written for the hour. Dear God, it gives us courage when you look into the word and see our types and our shadows and all them types and shadows. Dear God, reflecting your purpose, reflecting your expectation over our lives. And dear God, we can tell that greater work than what we read, than what we studied, than what was expressed in the old days shall we do. Not by might or by power, but by your spirit. Because the hour is now that you have made known all that has been hidden throughout the generations. And dear God, we deem it a grand privilege that we are witnessing things that prophets of old would have loved to witness. We are seeing things that men of old, great men would have loved to see. But our eyes behold them, our ears hear them, Lord. Not because we are better than any man, but because you have anointed our eyes with eye soul. You have opened our ears, our spiritual ears, that we can be able to catch the pulsation of your whispers. And I'm thankful this evening, Lord, trusting that something good is in store. All the hands that are raised, the lives that are presented before you, the circumstances and the things that they are going through. Dear God, I know you are more than able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever ask or think. And I pray that tonight be that night, Lord, that we can find a refreshing from the presence of God, that we can know that you are in our midst. The same yesterday, today, and forever. You are rejoicing with us. You are healing our bodies. You are lifting up our souls to heavenly places. Dear God, I pray that they be an enlightenment that has never been before. That, Lord, as you are drawing us closer to the prophecies of our days and the realities of the scriptures we are supposed to walk in, Father, may it be a glorious time. I I'm thankful for the atmosphere. Consider the hands that are raised, both here in this tabernacle and those who are streaming live. I just pray, oh God, that each and every individual may appreciate your grace that you are pouring right now. Healing rain upon our afflicted bodies, giving us peace of mind 
to the distressed and oppressed. I pray, oh God, that all spiritual blessings in heavenly places may be able to be ushered in and people receive, even for your glory. Oh, we thank you for this beautiful atmosphere that we are in. Take away every hindrance and impediment, whatever the enemy may try to bring to disrupt, let it not stand. I'm dedicating, Lord, whatever that's remaining in your faithful hands, may you anoint me for service. Pray even for the interpreter. Pray, Lord, even for the sound itself. Give us, oh God, unction to function at this junction in a way that will bring deliverance in the lives and the hearts of your people. We are dedicating and committing everything in your faithful hands. In the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray, believing, and everybody say, Amen. Praise God. We give a mighty hand of praise for wonderful You can do better than that. Praise be to God. May the Lord richly bless you, beloved. We certainly deem it a grand privilege to be back again. And I firmly believe something good is in store. God can never disappoint. He's always ready to position. Establish us upon the present truth as he has declared to us last Sunday. And I know that I know that I know that his word will never return back void but it will accomplish whatever that he has sent it for. This evening, I just want you to open your heart and say, Lord, I'm available. Have your way with my life. Now there comes a time we come into the house of the Lord filled up with our concepts we come with our perceptions we come with our solutions we come having calculated our way out of our situation things that we are going through but yet many times these ways are not our ways there's already a beaten path that we ought to follow so believers ought to come in submission in reverence prepared to be taken, to be led and to be directed because God knows exactly what you are going through and he knows exactly what you need to come out of your condition for oh, brother, time is fast spent the day is at hand we will not have any other opportunity to have this kind of intimacy this is our season to be intimate with the Holy Ghost the presence of the Lord Jesus moving in our families in our beings directing every footstep that you take there will be no other better time than this time we spoke about being unknown until made known by the spirit of God there is a key that I believe God has given his bride international to unlock certain places places that many would have desired to have access into but because God works in seasons they could not get access to them things yes brother even though all things were revealed in 63 but revelation still progresses under the unchanging continuity of Elohim that we can meet the challenge of our day and the hour that we are living in. For the same God that took William Branham up in that constellation, he's still taking sons and daughters 
into immortal realms with him identifying his people blessed be the name of the Lord identifying his bride with the word that has been written since time immemorial and I'm here to urge you tonight that it's possible to walk out of this atmosphere changed renewed positioned encouraged established as a better believer as a better child of God to express the beauty of God's magnificence to this dying generation. I believe this is the time the bride ought to salute this end, this age. Say time is no more. This is the last performance. The final voice to this final age. And after that we are gone in a moment and in a twinkle of an eye. May the Lord richly bless you, beloved. I salute the invisible audience. God richly bless you. Uh, shall we temporarily take our seats? Sunday, I was preaching on the embodiment of deity. And I trust that it was a blessing to recognize that God requires us to be established in the present truth. That God is showing us his condensation that at this junction of time where we act, he is in the bride the body of believers. You know, some things, you know, when you look at them with the sincerity with which they were given, you can't help but to, to fear in your heart. You begin to realize how unworthy we are of such great things. But God, by his grace, he has made it known. He operates through the body. You see what happened in the time of the eunuch. The utopian eunuch. He had all the money. He was great. But yet when he read the scriptures, he couldn't understand what he was reading. And God had to raise a Philip. And he worked through the body to open the eyes of his understanding. I don't doubt he was a church goer. I don't doubt he was zealous. But the channel of God's operation was through the body. And at that time, it was Philip. You see Peter going to Cornelius' house. Same thing, beloved. They wanted the Holy Ghost to walk in this new way. But God didn't send Gabriel. It was Peter. He is the one that unlocked the Holy Ghost and ushered them into a new land, a land of unlimited possibility. God operating through man. He is a writer, even great Paul the Apostle. In his blindness, he could not use his abilities and the knowledge of the law. It had to take an Ananias to come and lay hands upon him. Now, such simplicity describing the embodiment of deity is what baffles many. When we say, thank you, Lord, you have hidden it to the wise, the eyes of the wise and prudent, but you have revealed it unto babes such as would learn. How is he hidden? He's hidden in the body that he's taking now. Are you catching what I'm saying? The covering that he's putting on 
is what the wise and prudent will never be able to see. So God has used you in this end time to bring his purpose, to bring out his mystery. And you as the vessel, you are the simplicity that the world will never be able to understand. And God is not going to reveal himself in a better way than he is in his bride in 2021. People are looking for a greater ministry with greater brilliance which is more shiny than they ever imagined. But God is already done. If you can't see God in his bride, forget about seeing him. Because there is no other form that is going to take from now on until the rapture. But the embodiment of his deity in the bride of the Lord Jesus. What a time, brother. We ought to descend the body of Christ. We ought to see God in one another. We ought to realize that we are the same and what we are is by grace. And when we come to that place, we are going to be blessed partakers of divine nature. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we were speaking about the embodiment of deity. And I'm, I'm just going to be taking a step further. The Lord willing, you know, I'm going to give a background of the inspiration inspiration I have for the end of the year. My heart, you know, beats a lot when I see the condition that Brother Branham was in 62. And something is pushing me to that place. I feel it's it's a season where God wants to unpack some things, you know, in our midst. So we need to be prayerful and trust in God. Not new things, brother, but certain things just need to be opened up. Is a writer. I, I was talking to my wife. And then I said, you know, the importance even of a pastor now she, she was giving me an example she said there are people that can read the spoken word understand the bible but they don't have a shepherd to guide them their wisdom becomes not not because it's not wisdom but it's not under the administration of the ordained channel for the hour like we're speaking about God working through the body. Now, now, you, you see what I mean? Now, Brabham then says the fivefold ministry will put sense to these things. Not to say they don't have sense, but when God anoints the fivefold ministry. They'll take a hold of these mysteries until they're so plain before your wandering eyes. The same book you've read, the same quotes you've quoted, but under the anointing of God, they will make you a different believer. He's a writer. And I was saying to her, that's the position of a woman in the home. When the father speaks, he's the spoken word. But children sometimes, they don't understand. So you, a woman is ordained as the pastor of the children to put sense to the language of the father. He, he can just speak certain things <laughs> and children take it for granted. But a woman in her position 
She will quote the father and put sense to the words of the father until the children will be more loyal, more respectful, and understanding the expectation that the head of the home has over their life. And I believe as the fivefold ministry, that is what's taking place, brother, to be put closer to God. Like Hegi knew exactly what the king wanted. God is coming to that place by the grace of God. How many believe it tonight? How many believe it tonight? I want to invite your attention to a couple of scriptures. Praise God. And I need your undivided attention. Praise be to God. God bless you, musician. Right. Let's start off with um, Ephesians. Or rather, let's start with First Corinthians. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Chapter two. Chapter two. And then I'm going to read from verse six. I've spoken about this chapter before. This is Paul declaring that he's preaching though it bring not excellence of speech or of human wisdom yet it consisted of the power of God. And then now the second section was showing that that power of God far excels the wisdom of this world and human sense. And the natural man cannot understand it because it's supernatural. Is that right? Now he then says, verse 6, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to not to not. Now we, we learned that the wisdom that he is speaking is among they that are perfect. And the word perfect, we're talking about people that are weaned from the milk. People whose eyes of understanding are open that they can understand the scriptures. The look, the look 24 type of people who had met with the word himself. And they saw the word himself revealing himself in itself. Quickening the scriptures that were written about him. And in that great exposure, they began to see themselves in the picture. Because they were one with that word that was revealing himself. Like Abraham saw himself in Melchizedek. That class of people saw themselves in the word revealing itself in itself. They saw themselves. So does it make sense? So these are the people that he is talking to. The wisdom among they that are perfect. And he makes it clear that this is not eloquence of speech. It's not joining scriptures with scriptures. It's nothing that you can get from the princes, which is the religious people of this life. 
It's beyond theology. It's divine. Now, when you come to Ephesians, I'm still going to continue. I just want you to get the picture. Now, the Bible says something here. I'll read from, maybe let's read verse 9. Are we together? And then I'll skip. He says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. Verse 9. Now, you, you see, this wisdom is connected to the revelation of the mystery of his will. So this is to most excellent Theophilus. Is it right? I'm not having echo, right? Now, are you catching that? Now, he says, verse 17, now, that the God of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, you, you see this connection. This is God himself coming to you in the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So there is no other way to know God except by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Which wisdom Paul says we speak among they that are perfect. Not the one of Gamaliel. But that which is God by divine revelation when he met with the pillar of fire on his way to Damascus. He says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his call, the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his, of his inheritance in the saints. Now he's talking now about the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Is that right? To come to a knowledge of the hope of his call, his calling. Now, we're not talking about the calling of being a pastor, a fivefold ministry, called to sing, called, you know, to be having a gift. But the calling that is eternal. The call to your salvation. The call that activates you in the purpose for which you are expressed into time. Is that right? The calling, you know, of the rapture, that call that says, come up higher. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. Let's take our seats. For a subject this evening, um, I'll take it from 1 Corinthians. 
We're back. Remember, I just read Ephesians. Now let's go back to where we were. He says, verse 7, but we speak. Now, he, he, he's going further in that wisdom. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Again, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. My subject, the wisdom of God in a mystery. Praise be to God. The wisdom of God in a mystery. Now, we have already learned how the seals were locked up in earthen vessels. In the time of Jeremiah, when they were taken to you know, Babylon, you know, Jeremiah was instructed to buy a piece of land as a sign of hope. That even though you go under captivity, one day you return to your own land. And that land which you buy, you need to get the title deeds and put them in earthen vessels. At your return, you are going to take the title deeds and claim your land and inheritance which was meant for you before your condemnation. <laughs> Which is the type of the story of mankind that Adam's fallen race was all condemned by representation. But God has put his, his grace, his glory, and the title deeds to the inheritance of this life in earthen vessels. And I'm not going to go in a line to show you that the earthen vessels is the bride itself, the embodiment of deity. I'm talking about the key that was given to Peter. That what he binds on earth is bound in heaven and what he loses on earth is loosed in heaven. That grace has been given to the bride as the final voice to this final age. When you speak about the final voice, you are talking about the highest office of appeal. That after the bride speaks, nobody else can make sense to God. Haman could come and explain. But after Esther had spoken, the king only had the word of the bride. Haman had to kneel. He had to beg. But Esther was the final voice to the ear of the king. And the same applies in our lives, our spheres of work, our families, whatever it is that we are surrounded with, you are the final voice. You can have parents that believe in other things which are not scriptural. Ancestral worship, witchcraft, other religions. They can speak certain things, but their words are not the final word over your life. Yet your word is the final word to their life. And once we understand that, you are coming to a place of activating the wisdom of God in a mystery. 
Because you understand that this wisdom, when it's made known in its designated and decreed season to the rightful people, it will do great exploits. And surely, friends, to see somebody whose eyes of understanding has been opened and having your own eyes of understanding opened, those are two different things. Can I bring that back again? God can come down and reveal himself to William Branham. And we can see that indeed there's been an enlightenment that has taken place. But yet that does not bring deliverance to you as an individual. Because in the dispensation we are living, it's not one man that enters into the holiest of holy for us all. As it was in the Old Testament, it had to be one man. And that man had to be a priest, sanctified and holy. If any other man tried to come in, that was dead. Remember the time that the people said, Moses, you think too much of yourself. You think God only speaks to you? We also want to talk to the same God. Moses said, prepare yourself to meet with the Lord. There to bath. There to abstain from, you know, their conjugal rights. So many things. But the time came when the Lord descended. Rather there was a shaking until every man agreed with one another. Let him not speak to us. Let him speak to Moses and Moses will speak to us. And that channel was upheld throughout the entire Old Testament. And the revelation of Moses was deliverance to the all the all to all Israelites. But in the dispensation of time we live in it. It's not like that. Because a prophet like Moses came. At his death, the curtain to the holiest of holies was rent into two. And access was granted to all men. Now God had a kingdom of kings and priests, not one priest. All of them were priests. So now we all had access. As we have access in 2021. And what kind of access? To say where William Branham went. You can also go. Yes, before him we could not. But he went to the land. And he brought the report. He gave us the fruits. And he said we are all called under the same grace. Rapturing grace. Rapturing faith. But look at all this. It is part of the wisdom of God in a mystery. Because this is a common man from Kentucky. Who even says I'm not a prophet? Who says I'm not Elijah? Like John the Baptist. Who says I'm not even a preacher of the gospel? Until the wise men of the world put him in the shelf and say your place is to heal the sick. Not to teach the word. You're not called to preach. You're a stammerer. But yet the wisdom of God was hidden in a mystery called Malachi 4. <laughs> he was the man that was ordained to bring a language that you can trace. 
from the Bible. Psalm 78. Move with me very quick, brother. Verse 2 says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. This is God speaking. That he will open his mouth in a parable. It's a heavenly story with an earthly meaning. An earthly story with a heavenly meaning. One that you can never be able to unlock unless the one with the cord or the password opens for you. <coughs> Is that right? These are the things that William Branham was having. Praise be to God. Isaiah 48, verse 6 says, Thou hast heard, see all this, and will not ye declare it? I've shoot the new things from this time. Even hidden things. And thou didst not know them. Is a writer. Now, this man from Kentucky, God was speaking to him like this. But I'm going to show you new things. Hidden things. Things that you didn't know. Can somebody say amen? I'm talking about the same things that Daniel required. I'm talking about the things that John was forbidden to write. Yeah, it is this spoken word. Is it right? That you was forbidden to circulate. To, 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 give her, to give away. When he was about to write, do not write. This is the food we read, the food we eat. But yet, it's still a mystery. Because after it was preached, there's still a supernatural element that remains. And where is that supernatural element? It is in the embodiment of deity. It is in the body, the bride. She carries that element. Malachi 4 completed his task. But you and I remained with the task. The places that God has left for the bride, his Holy Spirit in the bride to finish off. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. Now, this man, William Branham, he became despised, but yet he was the container of the solutions that mankind required. But you, you must agree with me that if ever William Branham was taken seriously, this world would not be in the condition it is. Matthew 13, verse 34, he says, all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. This is how he speaks to the world. In parables. And if he doesn't speak in parables, he speaks nothing. So how is the world going to see? How will they understand? He says he did that, verse 35, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things that have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Amen. 
la amba gazufanyi so lito bura e ava e zipiri chesha ngoda fatwa is that right nani shwene na now things that were never known and this language, this is the language you and I have access to. But how do you know you've got access to it? It changes you. It changes you. Not by choice. That's why if you... If, if, if whatever you have doesn't change you, you need to question the quality of what you're receiving. Oh, the depth, the quality that you have is reaching inside of you. Is that right? Paul said to the Romans, Romans chapter 16, verse 24 and 5. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you, O Amen. Now to, now to him that is now, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God, only wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Bandavote, Batibazwa, Gamamoro, Abapur Fita, Umunayo, Ubo Amzimu, Wakarena Kari, Oribeva Pao, Gauri, Babeva Pao, Gautain. Now you begin to see whatever to Mosbona that it's not the big things that the world as, is trying to do. As to Suran, as Shabola, going to get the soul. It is the little things they leave undone. If two stukus never see up to get what she and it is in those little things where the wisdom of God led in a mystery. And we are talking about the revelation which was kept a secret since the world began. Let me bring this back again. Holding the seven seals book is not what I'm talking about. Knowing the mysteries intellectually and explaining them is not what I'm talking about. Your eloquence, your eloquence, your, your, your diction, your ability, your your ability to speak. That, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a revelation that is internal. That's like the hope of your calling. Not the calling of gifts. The gifts and callings which are, you know, without repentance. I'm talking about the calling that my sheep heareth my voice and the stranger they cannot follow. The call to say, come up higher. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, before I come to climax, I want you to hear what Brother Branham says here. Beloved, give me my first court. Oh, glory be to God. Vocabulary fails me. What is upon my heart, words cannot express. But I know if you go to 1962 and feel the vibration of William Branham's heart, you're going to understand what I'm preaching tonight. When he preached the spoken word, is it the time of the answer? 
When he was told to go west, when he took all them dreams and interpreted them, when the rock was struck and a place where light had never shone was given, when the rock was opened, cut open, and a place that light had not shone, was opened. When he told the brothers in a dream that brothers look on this while I go west. When you feel the things that William Branham was going through that time you are going to realize that this message is more than a religion. This message, message is more than proving a point. This message message is more than being right and the denomination wrong. This message is more than people patting you at the back and say you are going to make it. This message is deeper. It's more intimate. It, it's individual. That two will be on the same bed, one will be taken and the other will be left. This message is the wisdom of God in a mystery, brother. The same Bible, the same spoken word, making a difference. And to one, it's only mental. But to the other, the same angels that came to meet William Branham visit you in your secret chamber and enlighten your understanding opening your eyes until before your wandering eyes you see clearly from the Bible things that will charge you with power that food cannot give you power that money can strength cannot give you can somebody say amen? Brother Branham says, listen close. Look back down. Examine yourself with the word and see where you at. How many love this language? He says, listen closer. Look back down. Examine yourself with the word and see where you at. Where you at, believer? You're in Africa. You're in Europe. You're in Australia. Where you at, believer? You're in 2021. No. God is speaking a language that goes beyond continental divide. That, that goes beyond your time. 2021. He's saying, where are you at? Now, you women that got short hair, let it grow. Let it grow. You're wearing shorts. Take them off. Act like a lady. You men still smoking cigarettes and running to pull holes. Stop it. I don't care how much you profess. She's still holding to that organization and saying this is it and this is it. You better stop. Look back down. Examine it with the word. We are getting plump out of now he's talking to denominational people. Now, 216 is a we ought to have lived above short hair and all. These are do's and don'ts. These are religious things. This age now, we are back into something now that God is revealing the hidden mysteries had been put on the book before the foundation of the world. And those 
who have obeyed in these small things who catch it in these other things. If they haven't, it will go over the top of their head as far as the east is from the west. Can somebody say amen? I hope you heard this language. We, we, we should be above certain things. When we say we are above religious things, we, we are not saying we don't care how you live, how you dress, and how you do things. We are saying you are beyond that. You have observed that. But now he speaks about these things which God is declaring in our midst now that there are people who have failed to see God in the small things. When these mysteries are going to come, they are going to miss it. As far as the east is from the west, 1963 is not a day. This is not a day. 1963 is an experience. 1963 is a scripture fulfilling. It's not a day in the calendar. That's why we didn't live to see him in 63. But we carry the same experience. That's why we're not upon Sunset Mountain when William Balaam was taken up in the constellation. But today we can stand and say we feel his foot on our flesh. We feel his foot on our spirit. We feel our soul crying. Time is no more. The beast from the land, the beast from the sea, they are under our control. Now, now, you see what we are talking about. So, you are not supposed to live in 1963 to be a beneficiary of what I'm preaching. Tonight, if you can catch the wisdom of God in a mystery, you walk out of this place with the same experience, with the same feeling, with the same encounter, with the same knowledge that God has given to this generation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, brother, there will never be another time. If not now, where? If not here, where? If not you, then who? I'm not waiting for another calendar. I'm not waiting for another sermon. The wisdom of God in a mystery is before our wandering eyes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But Brabham says like Gideon separating his men. There were thousands and thousands. God said, that's too many. That's true, brother. What we are bringing is not for the majority. He said, you walk with too many. To walk with God, you walk alone. And he said, that's too many. God said, separate them again. Or there will be a separation that's going to take place before the third and final exodus into immortality. A bride will be called out of a church. Individuals into this place. There are many preachers, many pastors, many prophets, but God said to William Branham, go west. You're going to meet with me there. Glory be to God. Why we are gathered like this, God is going to separate individuals to the place where the wisdom
wisdom of God is in a mystery. And he's going to instruct you. He's going to enlighten you. He's going to equip you. He's going to give you rapture in faith. He's going to bring you to that condition that when the voice comes at us, they come up higher. You go higher. Can somebody say amen? Are you hearing this language? Gideon. That's too many. Separate them again. They came out of Babylon the first time. We came out of denomination. Many of us. But God says separate them again. There's still too many. Do you get the point? We have many churches. Many pastors. Many believers. But God is saying there's still too many. Separate them again. Separate them again and on down till you had a little handful. He said, that's the group. I want to do the job. He said, that's exactly what happened. And William Branham says, I wonder if a dozen will make it. This is not a popular gospel. Neither is it an emotional gospel. It's not to support your culture, your background, your theological affiliation, your nationality. This message is God. It goes beyond color. Nations, continents, religious affiliation. This is God dealing with the souls of men. With one language, the wisdom of God in a mystery. That's not English. That's not vendor. This is the word language that Anna can understand in a blindness. Without eyes, blind but Timius was able to see the Messiah. With eyes, with eyes, the Pharisees could not see him. Are you catching this language I'm talking about? He that has an ear is the one that we hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Quote number two, proving his word. I'm coming to a close just now. How does he make his word known to the people? May you be quickened. How does he make his word known to the people? First, God knowing that there will be unbelievers. <laughs> now watch the wisdom of God. <laughs> knowing there will be unbelievers. <laughs> and how the majority will be unbelievers. <laughs> he, by foreknowledge, <laughs> predestined a seed in every age <laughs> that would believe it. Now, if you notice it there, for each age goes right on with his word. Everything right on time. Nothing hinders God. He goes right on. And every click is moving just exactly right. We think sometimes it's not going to work right. But don't you worry. His clock is timed just exactly to the sl split instant. And everything is working just exactly right. Now when I look around sometime and see these rickies and ricketters that we got today on the streets and how everything is going, I think, oh God. <laughs> now what is Brother Branham saying here? We've got political destabilization. We've got economic crisis. 
we've got COVID-19 and all these things yeah, taking place. There are a lot of voices. You can agree with me. Our ears are tired. There are so many things. Our eyes are tired. There's a new thing every time. In technology, in religion, is a right. So when you look around, you start to think, will the rapture take place? We once thought when we're locked down, we'll be raptured. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be raptured. Now, no more lockdown. Is there going to be a rapture? What's really happening? It's on and off. Now, people don't understand. So, should I continue planning about my marriage? My business plans? Should I forget about the rapture now? Is the prophecy and the promise going to come to pass? I think that's the condition that the devil is putting us in. He's changing masks. He's diversifying himself. And he's doing all to manipulate man. But Brother Branham says, in the midst of all of that, God's clock is ticking right. It's not influenced by all them things. Everything is working exactly right. He said, when I look around some time, and okay, he says, wait a minute. He says, see, my timepiece is just exactly right. I've, my my timepiece. I've got to put you upon the same basis I did the first man. Them days. I put you on the same basis of Luther. On the same basis of Wesley. Because you see, sin wasn't known then like it is now. Is that right? Are you hearing this language? And when we got more knowledge, and when we got more knowledge now, than we had then, and when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises a standard against it. See, God now today, we've got more knowledge more understanding. So the rivers of unbelief is flowing in hard. But God raises a standard against it. He's the writer. A standard against it. But remember, he's always the reason he predestined these things to happen. He's got a reason. He foretold them by his prophets that they would happen. And when the righteous see these things confirmed, then they know it's right. Regardless of what anyone says, they know it's right. Can I get an amen to that? When you see these things, you know it's right. Now, you see the reason now that wisdom of God in a mystery. The need for more enlightenment. The need for more understanding. The revelation you had in, in 2019 cannot overcome the devil of 2021. The bride is always on the move. Like God, he had Martin, he had Wesley, he had Pentecost, and he had William. And in the bright age, there is a progression of revelation to meet the challenger of your location, the challenger of your season. That's why we are not a denomination. We don't have a headquarters that give us one voice because we are different. We are placed different. Our locations are different. So no one voice can lead the bride. Every individual 
must meet with God. Philip met with him. Peter met with him. Paul met with him. Barnabas met with him. Stephen met with him. Every member of the bride had an encounter with God as an individual. And that is the hour now. When they met, brother, they were not meeting to indoctrinate each other. They were just meeting to compare the notes. To say, hey, brother, on my way, he did this. My way, he did that. Oh, the wisdom of God in a mystery, the embodiment of teaching, unknown until made known by the Spirit of God. Glory be to God. Listen to what Brabham says. My last quotation. To put some of his Holy Spirit. Oh, did I come right? He said, okay. Can you come a little bit? You can just bring the quote, brother. I want to read from the top a little bit. Draw to the heart. He says, now, let's pray. Are you with me? Now, let's pray for God to give us. He says, to put some of his Holy Spirit salve across our eyes tonight. The, the eye salve. Across our eyes tonight. Is the right? Open our eyes. Oh, this is the ending, the setting of 2021. We have a dawning of 2022. Embrace this. Lord God, he prays. I could preach till I've lost my breath. Other ministers could do the same. We could stand here. And no matter what we did, we could not go anyway without you showing us the way to go. We need spiritual sight. Let the Holy Spirit tonight. Lord, open our eyes. Open our understanding. Show us his presence. That we may know his promises this week. Over and over. Through the scripture. Down through the Bible. We have brought it night after night. You have promised this thing. And we are living here to see it right before our eyes. Granted, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. I ask it. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, Mrs. Sita. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The wisdom of God in a mystery. You know, much can be spoken. But this is my advice to you. You need the grace of God more than any preacher can preach it to you. It's not ye that runneth or ye that willeth. It's the Lord that will show mercy. William Branham recognized it had to be the grace of God for him to come to where he was. And I pray the same. You know, when he reveals to himself to you more and more, 
It's not something to glory about. It makes you to fear. It makes you to cry and sigh. For the blind and those that cannot have sight. Makes you sober. It stabilizes you in a certain fashion. I don't know how to put it, brother. But the mystery and the wisdom of God in a mystery when he gives you access to it he doesn't puff you up no there's something about it that you can't explain and I pray tonight by God's grace that he can visit you in your own special way in your own atmosphere you need that experience right at home or as a father you need to bring your family sit down with your wife and your children let them know this is meant for them but they have to come to a place of understanding the wisdom of God in a mystery do you know some people the last time they heard the voice of God was when they spoke to a preacher some people before they died the last they heard from God was a sermon on the pulpit but they couldn't realize the wisdom of God in a mystery they thought maybe God would speak in a certain manner in a certain fashion some will walk away into the world and the last voice of God they've heard is warning from the bride oh brother I'm talking about the wisdom of God in a mystery it's hidden If ever God will not reveal himself in any other way but in the bride it means we need humility to see him. Flesh and blood cannot give you this. Only God. You need him. I need him. We need him. At the setting of 2021, may God give us such desperation like he gave to William in 62. You can feel it. Something is about to take place. Something is about to take place. And I feel it, brother. I believe the bride feels it as well. That there's something that fits into happen. With our heads bowed. Words can be spoken until we are out of breath. But I want to pray with you as you stop a while where you at. Look deep into yourself. I believe there's a purpose why you're under the influence of this voice tonight. There's a lot of voices, I know. But this one is a certain sound. It's directing you specific to a specific spot that God wants you to come to. As God spoke to Gideon, he's speaking to his bride. There are still too many people. There are still too many people. There's going to be another separation just before the translation. Before the bride is taken up, there will be another another separation a bride out of the church a bride out of the message community many will look with their wandering eyes we knew William Branham we knew that the rapture would come but how come we are not part of it 
It's because it's the mystery of God in the mystery. It's happening right now. A separation is taking place. Where you act as a bride, as a woman, as a man, where you at? I hope you're not drunk by the things of this life. I hope you're not overwhelmed by the pressures of this age. God is giving more understanding, more enlightenment. He's raising a standard to give you unction that you can be able to function victoriously. All you need is to open your heart and accept to be led. Accept the Holy Spirit to direct you. Say, Lord, here I am. Have your way. Beat unto me according to your word. Not my will, but thine, O Lord. In this final ride, if you cannot open my eyes, I will not see. If you will not carry me, I will not be able to walk. I need you more than I can say. I need you more than I can pray. I need you more than I can fast, Lord. I need that grace. I need that mercy. In an hour of judgment. Grant it unto me, Lord. Because I know certain things are known. Until you make them known by your spirit. I want to know that I'm the embodiment of Jesus. I want you to know that the redemptive blessings are mine. I want you to know, Lord, that I'm chosen for such a time as this. Just raise your hand if you need grace. There's the prayer that Brother Branham made. Just raise your hand. You're saying, Lord, I need spiritual sight. Open my understanding. Show me your presence that I may know your promises through the scripture. Gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you this blessed evening for your grace and your mercy. These jumbled up words, dear God, it's your wisdom hidden in a mystery. But I believe there are people that you have ordained to catch the pulsation of such utterances and oracles. Forgive us for being dignified and trying to form a line, your purpose and core in this hour. When yet in your own Sassafras way, you called John, you revealed yourself to Simeon, you spoke to Anna, blind Bartimaeus to recognize that you are passing his way. You're the one that made Zacchaeus to have that faith at such a time that if I climb a little higher, I can be able to have him come in my heart and eat with me. And I believe you are the same God that steered William Branham in 1962 when you are preparing to make known the mysteries and secrets that were hidden since the foundation of the world. Dear God, he became nervous. He became upset. He didn't understand what was happening. He even preached. He did the time of the end, sir. He was under panic. There were dreams. There were so many things that were taking place around him. But deep inside, he knew. He knew the hour had come for the revelation of the word of God. Revelation 10. And oh God, you was taken to the west where you was told your success would be in the west coast. And right there, Lord, you was able to interpret that mystery. You met with them angels. 
and it was revealed to him what the program and plan of redemption was. And when he came back like the high priest, he knew better. He knew who he was dealing with because you had made known to him the wisdom that was hidden in a mystery. And here we stand in 2021. The year is about to set. 22 is about to dawn. But who knows if we are going to come to 22. But if ever we should, we are seeing the responsibility that you've extended to us as your bride. That indeed, we have a part to play in the unfolding mystery in our day. Thank you that we are not a denomination. Because indeed, Lord, if we were, we're going to be stuck. If ever your spirit was not visiting us in our homes as individuals, where would we be, Lord? we will be the most confused bunch of people. But we are grateful, Lord, that you are coming to see us in our own atmosphere. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That pillar of fire, that angel of God, appearing and disappearing, inspiring us, Lord, where to put our feet in such treacherous waters. Oh, I thank you for every hand, every heart, and every individual. You know the burden that they are carrying and the situation that they are going through. May tonight be that night, oh God, that you open their understandings and enlighten them. Open their eyes with that Holy Spirit sounds. That they can see things for what they are and operate in the part that you expect them to operate. For I know there's a part. There's a part, the beaten part of the gospel that you expect your bride to walk in. You say, there are too many. There must be another separation. A final separation like in the hour of Gideon. There has to be a handful of people that are going to accept your mystery into that great rapturing faith and rapturing grace and translation. Oh, let it be, I pray, that none of us may be left desolate, confused, without opportunity. That this word is lending upon our spiritual ears. May it not just conscientize us, but may it quicken us to that place you want us to be. I've done my part as a man. I leave the rest in your hands. I know you've got a purpose with these words that were spoken tonight. And may that purpose be fulfilled in every field the word has been planted. May that purpose be unfolded, I pray. People may see you in their homes, in their lives, in their situations. Thank you, Lord. We love you and we appreciate you. As we surrender and salute you. In Jesus' name. As we have come to the end of our service, I pray for special grace to drive back home. This festive season, I see a lot of traps and snares that's been put by the wicked one against your bride. But I stand in the name of Jesus Christ and I apply the blood upon our families, our children, everybody here, our loved ones. We command the spirit of death back to the pits of hell. We speak fortification, protection. May the angel of God that encamp upon the, around thee that fear thee over and fortify your bride. We are praying in the name of Jesus Christ for divine protection. We know prayer is never in vain. And we know prayer is a revelation. Prayer of faith. You guiding our lips to say the right things, to pray the right prayers that we can be able to combat the enemy when he least expects it and he thinks that we are trapped and ignorant. You just come up from nowhere, Lord, and pray through our lips words that can make a difference and change our circumstances. We refuse every premature death in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your will be done and your word prevail. We ask it. And let everybody say, Amen. Thank you.
you, Lord. I'm dying to be reunited. Praise God. God richly bless you. Hold fast. That which you had. I'm dying. I'm dying to be reunited. In my soul. In my soul I'm excited I'm dying to be reunited With the one who's always known me I'm dying, I'm dying to be reunited In my soul Yeah. 
I'm looking for a change. Let's try sprinkle me speckled dove. Praise the Lord. How many things sprinkle me? You want the blood of your mate. That's the only way a sinner can be saved. Deliverance of a leper. Praise be to God. Give us the lyrics. I've considered, uh, I've considered the Lebanon in the day, in a day of his cleansing. His hope. All his hope was in two. Two doves. Two doves. You can give us the lyrics. Thank you, Lord. We'll finally, finally, utterly, utterly destroy. Thank you, Lord. And what is fluttering our wings in the evening time? Crying. Crying. Holy, holy unto the Lord. It's the hope. Yes. Yeah. 